She's just saying hi for a second. Hi. hi. Hello. <laughs> All right, but this is supposed to be later after I've like greased the wheels and like made some sort of good impression. <laughs> later, later. Thank you. It's okay. No, I don't want you to say that. Now my husband's horning in. No, no. <laughs> no. This should be the whole. Can I have one thing? Can I have one thing? Like... <laughs> oh, the neighbors are here. Yeah. <laughs> well, my mother in law's on the phone. <laughs> Um, this is important. You got to put your other people up. Everyone's got to share the spotlight. You're um, sure. You're, uh, I did. I didn't think you were going to take me up on it so soon. Okay. <laughs> My God, I sent a text saying, come in at some point. <laughs> okay. Love you. I'll see you in a little bit. I can't get my kids to come on to any Zoom Um even a lot of their classes, it turns out they haven't been showing up for those either. So um, <laughs> I'm so impressed. Oh, well, no, because she's so like kind of a like performy whore Disney hooker that if she thinks it's a show, she's there. But if it's like for math, she's like, yeah. sorry, I didn't know I had it. And like, yeah, it doesn't show up either. <laughs> Well, you know, they're, they're still teaching, you know, that there's new math, but it's the old geometry. They're teaching triangles they should be teaching kids their angles and really how to show good face on these uh on screen time <laughs> what's going to get how you old farther is your kid how old That's are you your kids i've got two kids nine and seven and um, oh, okay they're doing, doing great uh, oh cool wow wow i love this well fielding oh uh, let me let me introduce you to all of our uh everybody watching live uh got a great guest already a huge entrance by the way bringing out <laughs> the, the song and dance the whole cast came out <laughs> show stopping cold open wow crazy <laughs> put an intermission here um a screenwriter comedian actress fielding edlows in the green zoom with us thanks for joining us fielding thank you really thrilled thrilled to be here in this intimate <laughs> Show stopping <laughs> extravaganza. Oh, I, I'm I'm excited. Uh, that was almost too much to bear. Straight up top. Um, <laughs> who, uh, we've got Ryan Singers here with us. James Fritz is here, and Greg Barris just showed up as well in the green room. What's up, everybody? Already a hat change from Greg. I love it. This wow. is this is a hot show. <laughs> we got a hot show. You know, I'm going bowler. I was gonna go original Smokey and the Bandit actual. Oh. Hat. I love Both that hat. Things. That's too I much heat. That I'm taking it down, bringing down the bowler. Wow. Have you ever worn that that cowboy hat in a Miata or a, or a, any type of uh, convertible at all? I've never driven in this cowboy hat. But <sighs> wow. it is the hat from, look, it even says Smokey in the Bandit. Oh, it really that. is. That's, That's not just a style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wow, this is a bit of a celebrity sighting for me. Um, <laughs> and the hat, yeah. Me too. Fielding, have you ever seen a really famous hat in person like this? Is this your? No, <laughs> no, no. I feel like it needs its own box. I <laughs> yeah, its yeah. Own, Can you? It has a section. I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated. Like I feel like it almost clouds my cold open. At yeah. This point. When I moved well, to LA, my dad was like, "I hope you meet the Smokey and the Bandit hat one day," and I was like. <laughs> My dad, it doesn't work like that, but you know, it's the magic of <laughs> magic of Hollywood. Have you seen the Baywatch binoculars yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think of what think of what those binoculars saw. You know oh, what I, I mean? Know. What, what's been through those <laughs> lenses? <laughs> Boy, heavens to Betsy. Um, that's incredible. Um, where did you get where did you get this Smokey and the Bandit hat, right? I mean, come on, Paul. Uh, my father wigs. Did the wigs for smoking yeah. the bandit. My father, oh, you know. you know, I didn't. I didn't realize that there'd be crossover. I thought there might be, um, you know, subtle grudges between the uh, hair and the hat people over there. On <laughs> oh, like like fire and police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you find out, you're like, oh, there is a bitter rivalry here. Oh, I didn't know. That uh, kind of blew my mind when I realized that you know, fire, the fire department and the police department weren't like BFFs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really thought all those <laughs> I really thought all those egos would work well together. Yeah, I thought sirens <laughs> were like all on board with each other. I thought it was a siren thing. <laughs> It is kind of funny to think that they're heading to accidents competitively. There's a bit of a competitive <laughs> spirit and they have in how they have hats. Yet women are dressing up for the fire, but I'm not dressing up for the cop. Like I'm yeah. running to put yeah. on non clump mascara for the firefighter and like a push up bra, <laughs> not for the cop. Yeah, that's, yeah uh, that's... that's just got to piss the police off knowing that. <laughs> They don't get the chili. They don't get the chili cookoffs. Um, they just get ball. Like a, there's always a policeman's ball. No one, no one gives a shit about. I that just stuff. imagine like there's a police officer standing somewhere with a cat. It just saved, and nobody gives a shit. No one gives. <laughs> <laughs> firemen, they have better dog. They have the better dog. I mean, police have like a Nazi kill dog. The firemen have a beautiful Dalmatian. Firemen have a better hat. Yeah, uh, it's a fun hat. What is this hat for? <laughs> Nobody knows. It's just a stupid big fun hat. <laughs> Firemen have a sexy calendar. Absolutely yeah. no one wants the yeah. top of the month calendar. No and they one. slide poles. They're sliding yeah. down poles. They're having fun. They've got holes yeah. in, in floors and or ceilings, depending on how you want to play it. Hey, we got a hole in the floor to just whoop, whoop, whoop down real yeah. quick. What do you guys have? Paperwork? Fine. <laughs> yeah, and if they shoot you, it's just water, and that's like a party, <laughs> right? Party. And that's they just like a, a dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> in control the mounts. There's been historical use of too much water on people. At, that's at true. Point. You're right. Um, so you got to watch out for them mm. too. A a a fab. <laughs> oh man you're gonna find this is that's a that's gonna have a lot harder time gaining traction even <laughs> people are like ab fab i love that show i'm like yeah no but... <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i'll talk about that i'll talk about absolutely fabulous with you matter of great show. matter of fact if you were talking show. about something else i'm changing the subject to absolutely fabulous <laughs> It was a great. Yeah, trip. no, I'm a fan of non sequitur. So anything, yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's very cool. I'm that's, that's all well, I do. That's the whole life. show. Tourette's and non sequitur. <laughs> yeah. When you have when you have a children, your life really takes another level another level of non sequitur behavior because now you've got so much more shit entering your circle that is not up to you at all. Totally. And the older they get, the more it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I can kind of send her away now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Which military is camp? Yeah. Oh, school? no, no. I'm, I'm, Googling, I'm Googling boarding schools in Brussels. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Go like boarding schools in like Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. I don't give a shit where as long as it's a plane ride. So she can't like walk home. Like some <laughs> losers are like, I'm going to sleep away camp in Hollywood. Like so I can walk home. And it's like, go fuck yourself. Like, go, you know, go to Stad or Andorra or Frankfurt. I want you lost outside of those walls. When you step out, <laughs> there's a language barrier. No, you're stuck. That's good. That's you very kids, clever. Right. Which is, you are kind of smart because they have each other. Like, I'm her playmate. Like, I'm her imaginary oh, friend. And it's yeah. exhausting and horrible. It's, it is so hard to stay on the creative level of a child for a prolonged period of time. It's, <laughs> yeah. You're eventually like, I'm trying to categorize this and do this the right way. And you're just moving stuff. Or, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not fun. I got to get out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm squelching. I'm squashing. Squelching? Squelching is that like a stepping Scrunching? on? Scrunching? No, no, let's not get, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, Fieldy, I, I wanted to ask you about, um, I know you were saying you're, you're working on the second season of Bitter Homes and Gardens, your, a web series that you're doing with your husband. I've employed him. He's just the actor. Oh, I employ smart. my husband. I am the creator and writer. There you go. Wow. He, he, so, he gets so annoyed. He's like, professional writers don't go around saying I'm a writer. <laughs> like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, he gets so annoyed with me. But yeah, so we just shot our second season. Um, yeah, we got through I it. Can't, I can't get over, I mean, I mean, I can't get over the power dynamic shift in your, in your household by employing your, your husband in your creative work. <laughs> 
when you're both creative professionals. That is. I mean, it's in, like, I feel like this is so sad, but like the last five or six years, like the, my mantra is like, well, I can't leave Larry because we have the web series. Like we stay together. <laughs> the web. Just like or a the web series. That you can, like we've said that to our couple therapists. Like we'll leave yeah. the web series and it's like going pretty well. Like, it's like <laughs> how well is it going? But um, we were, we're very, I mean, he's, He's hard. I mean, he can be horrible, and he basically like he took over the directing because he didn't. He had issues with the directing, so he just <laughs> decided to start direct co-directing. So was, direct. Okay, yeah. Yeah, which is. Um, but we we have a we have a, some kind of thing. Um, I mean, we're we're terrible on vacations. We're terrible just like hanging out. But somehow, like when we're if you improvising, have a, if you we're have a project. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we're in the project. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's kind of true. Once you just once you're just sitting around looking at each other, mm -mm, that's no yeah. good. Then you're Re relaxing can be very hard. It is right. right? I mean, yeah. it's really difficult. I it's mean, like, I'm not we... really relaxed with him. I mean, I find him so <laughs> triggering and incendiary. I'm never. <laughs> 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 It's like, babe, you set me off, but in a in a really a really creative way that gets my my juices flowing. And, mm, I mean, what do you do? That's the muse right there. You gotta muse. You gotta keep yeah. that around. Just sticking a camera in his hand to keep him busy. <laughs> exactly, but he'll just turn it on himself. Like, I feel like this, this this comedian once tweeted, and it's haunted me ever since. He's like. You know you're in a terrible relationship if your partner is constantly taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like haunts me because I feel like that's like all my husband does. He's on the 10 and he's like, I have good light. And he's just like taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, you love your husband. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> I don't really believe in marriage, but I'm married. You're gonna yeah. say love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, love it's like I, I someone once was like how do you define i was in a spiritual gathering or what have you 12 steppy thing and literally it was like a q a and they were like how would you define love like someone asked me that you're like what like are imploded. we doing imploded. i'm like go fuck yourself i don't know it's a beat it's an action yeah you're like webster's dictionary says love <laughs> is <laughs> yeah i hate those types of uh fake deep questions yeah. that are like yeah. leading you to their deep point i'm like just get get to it what yeah. you get yeah. something you want to say about love Let's yeah you're the love guy it. what's your fucking yeah. right <laughs> don't put me on the spot i'm not giving a yeah. tedx talk on intimacy like i this is not my thing yeah Brian. um can you can you solve my unprompted riddle about love before you like, <laughs> do, before we talk more you're like you power me brian define love for us <laughs> You know, if it, I've never even thought about trying, I mean, like ever since you brought this up, I was like, what would I even say? And I think me to define love, it would be, I'd be a visual, it'd be just kind of a visual definition of like spastically dancing and like giggling would be like, <laughs> like if so, if I was at one of those things and someone's like, will you define love for us? I'd be like, oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> or just and just like freaking out and like Ma Molly, freaking out. Love, is love is Molly. Love is Molly. Yeah. Molly. And love is Molly and dancing the eye of the tiger on your lawn. From <laughs> yes, your and that oh, yeah. is the TikTok that we should. <laughs> 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 love is that Molly. Does... Molly is life. But I don't think love is supposed to have that brutal of a come down. Nor oh. should it dehydrate you in such a. Horrible well, you got to stay high. You got to you got to make sure you drink a lot of water before you you start loving. Yeah, no, but, you're in love. Yeah. You come down. You need to eat some bananas and have some five HTP nearby. Yeah, and with love, you got to <laughs> trust your dealer. Yeah, you got to <laughs> trust with your trust circle with your dealer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh, it's been man. so long from me. I had a dealer. It's what I had a pager when I had a dealer. <laughs> I literally just had like PTSD, like my pager. <laughs> now, can I ask a question here, Paul? Mm. Please, Ryan. Um, do Fielding made me think of this. You know how everything old is new again all the time and 
fashion and everything else you know the yeah. sun the moon okay. the sun the moon day okay. night day wow. night yeah. do we think beepers are pagers are ever going to make a comeback mm. i mean they have some pluses Ooh, that's an sure. excellent question i think they did i thought they did make a comeback they did i thought, thought people started getting back into beepers and pagers i think they were just watching the wire <laughs> Everyone started rewatching The Wire. Yeah. I finally finished it because I'm tired of lying to my friends. <laughs> but um, I think pagers might, I think it would be good for our brain and soul mm -hmm. to have like this thing instead of just, the, I think the screen is on some level kind of killing us. Yeah. But and I think have, the pager would be good. And you have a little more time to respond. It's not like an instant. <laughs> <laughs> is that a sponsored yeah. post, Greg, uh, by PagesDirect.net? It, it didn't answer. Popped the... up in my TikTok right now. <laughs> it didn't answer the question at all. Technologically savvy. This group is really on point. Oh yeah. Because really yeah. I think to... if we all want to be brand ambassadors for a sunglass company. <laughs> like, I don't see why I wouldn't. Is there the problem with this question? I'm realizing is. Uh, there's there's a couple problems with it. One, there would have to be like a modern use for the pager, right? That, and two, there would have to be maybe some kind of reintroduction of landlines, right? Mm. Or things other than cell phones, right? Right. I, I it just I would see it more. It would be a pared down cell phone, which they do have. There's, you know, because by the they end of pagers, phones, you could text, you could text them there anyway. There's dumb oh, the phones you can get that are just articles from like GPS and phone. 1998. 20, 2006, 2019, 2020, 2004. Like, Do any of them say yes? making a comeback. Oh. Wow. I'll get a pager no, tomorrow. I, I, mean, I don't. I'll, the I'll mini get one right now. could make a comeback too. These things just the aren't disc, happening. Disc man, disc man and Betamax. <laughs> <laughs> Victrola. <laughs> it's like, do you want this thing that takes about the same amount of space up in your wallet as the thing you already have that does now yeah. way less? What about and the, you're like, this is not ever catching on, baby. No. Sony do like a memory stick. Is that their thing? The memory stick? Or is they have something else? Sony has, and they gave up on it. And they're like, we're just doing USB like everyone else. But let's, what about like antiquated technology? Like vaporware? Like, you guys on board? <laughs> Sure. What are you? You asking? asked me a vaporware. I don't know what that. What? I know what that was referring to. Vaporware You're talking about love. Like, yeah. Vaporware love. <laughs> is that your the definition of love? love right? Vaporware. Yeah. My definition of love is when you make an entire gaming system using proprietary hardware and software, and then no one adapts it, and it's just gone forever. Wow. You like That's those beautiful. Are, same thing happened to all my jokes. I feel like. <laughs> Okay, here's the problem. They're incompatible. I, I figured out why pagers haven't made the comeback that we all okay. thought they were. They're would. inferior. I, I'm on Amazon right now. It's not because of the inferior technology and outdated usage. It is because I'm looking right now. It looks like there's $89 for a retro pager beeper. Wow. But it's also mm -hmm. an outdoor portable Bluetooth speaker. Um, <laughs> so it's... Oh, okay. come on now. And this See, one is this a re is, refrigerator no. sound magnet, but it's also a pager. No, it's a fake pager. See, you just can't, you can't buy them. I feel like we all just have to make a decision to like go back to zero. Like I still have a landline and people are like, oh, you have your fucking, like they think I'm so ridiculous when they get my answering machine, right. which we all hear. No, just wait till the grid goes down. You'll be the only... Yeah. And I always try to be funny on my outgoing message. Nobody thinks it's cute. Nobody's laughing. But I'm like, <laughs> that does feel. I enjoy that does feel like life. a thing of the past. Like I, people used to take a lot of pride in their funny outgoing message, and now people are just right. Like, oh yeah, I'll you just know, hang up. I am like a Jewish Jessica Tandy. It's not funny. Like my husband is like, stop it. <laughs> I like, no, yeah, I don't know cool. a lot about him from what you've said, but. I don't know if he's right for you. Oh my God, Greg. <laughs> I agree. Greg, this board has I went to a you. psychic. I went to, no, one psychic was like, <laughs> you're going to get divorced, but do it oh now God. before the world collapses. Oh, that was wow. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and here's my beeper number work? after you yeah, get divorced. Yeah, yeah, and here's my pager. <laughs> Hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Maggie May. My thing almost fell. Sorry, I was late. 
That's all right. We <laughs> it's great to see you. We're just talking about love and pagers. <laughs> and and the come down of Molly, which I still <laughs> was interested in hearing about. Cool, cool, perfect. Came at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to ask this um feeling. I kind of throw out some some questions to everybody throughout the 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 podcast just as just as a, a place to start some conversation and uh this one i was just so inspired by the name of your your web series bitter homes and gardens because my mother subscribed to better homes and gardens and uh That's you know funny. whether or not whether or not you want to or like to you read all of the magazines your parents got that was just uh, uh better homes and gardens was big for me but sunset magazine was you know the real shit for me totally. so this uh brings us to our my first question for the day is uh um what was your favorite magazine that your mother subscribed to ryan singer you're gonna go up first um what was your favorite magazine that your mother subscribed to my favorite magazine that my mother subscribed to oh shoot i i like we didn't have magazines in my house so can i say tv guide Hell absolutely yeah. <laughs> um there's a tv guide and i wasn't even allowed to look at it um because i i would get so scared as a child and i had nightmares like almost every night that if, if i saw a scary looking image i would that image would automatically be in my nightmare later that it was a uh, bob hope like every six months yeah <laughs> I just had, like i cannot see someone swing a golf club or i'll lose it and, uh, I, I, start, I start crying but i loved the tv guide because they'd always have little snippets in there um and you know about upcoming about projects like movies that were like in talks and maybe might be coming and things like that so if that if that can count i'll just say that because we didn't have any other magazines in my house that definitely counts that's a uh, i mean you you not you had the magazine in your house, so that's fine. Um, and it doesn't have to be a subscription; doesn't have to be just the magazine that your mom would grab that you would probably read the most. James Fritz, do you have what um, magazine? Well, I, I was thinking like my mother was a you know pretty religious lady, so I think there were only ever two magazines, and it was either Our Daily Bread, which you can guess what that is, <laughs> <laughs> it was a di- daily uh, thing where you got like a little 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 page long sermon and a bible verse and blah blah blah, or reader's digest which basically is christian so i would say reader's <laughs> digest because at least sometimes you'd read a story about a guy who like survived a fall and like had to survive in the woods for like three weeks before he was found and you'd be like yeah okay <laughs> I definitely remember my grandmother reading Reader's Digest and yeah. she'd be in the court and reading it and just like gasping. Yeah. And then, and then, <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, this must be good. And then I'd have like a joke page that was like the worst jokes you've ever read in your life. And yeah. I, I tried to get to a gig writing jokes for Reader's Digest and <laughs> couldn't get it. Really? Oh, yeah. That was like, that wasn't that long. I wish it was like six months ago. Uh, I guess no, they're it, still it, kicking. It man. wasn't six months ago, but it was a. It was I can't remember when it was, but it wasn't that. It wasn't like it was twenty years ago or something. Um, but yeah, I I I just and I quickly realized that like I don't think my, the jokes I'm writing are are, are appropriate for <laughs> Reader's Digest. <laughs> yeah, they're it's all such ba- a challenging bathroom magazines. Like you're, yeah. you're not too focused on them, you know. <laughs> they gotta be short. Nothing yeah. too esoteric. Um, <laughs> Save that for the short stories. Greg Barris, uh, what uh, what magazine did your mom get that you love the most? My mom really loved Jugs magazine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Was it because she herself ha- had great Jugs or was it just <laughs> Jugs envy? What do you think drew her to Jugs? Oh, great, great follow-up question. question. Uh, yeah. You nailed it, Paul. Paul. I want to know this too. <laughs> You know, my grandmother also had great jugs. We have great jugs in the whole family, both sides. Oh. Wigs and jugs. It's great wigs, great jugs, good stories. See, I was just imagining this way more wholesome, like it was a magazine about like new technology and orange juice containers. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Both sides of my family have like their ancestral containers and we have a great magazine about, you know, the history of your familial holding vessels. <laughs> Also the revolution of all the- around. <laughs> <laughs> They're all-
Um, I want to see the full three page article about the two thirds craft. You see a um, half craft and a full craft, but favorite like magazine. My mom would leave my mom. My mom would get the J.C. Penny magazine, which had a little mm. underwear in it. And... Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> That's like that. <laughs> it wasn't just a little underwear. That that was a it was a whole section. I remember it was, this. It was like twenty pages. Of it underwear. was it was a solid twenty pages, and and I wasn't mad about that either as a kid. Yeah, I feel like that. I, I feel like that some... also removed. Yeah, I do remember some Victoria's Secret catalogs coming in the mail. I don't know how mom got on that list, but they definitely showed up. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, James, they don't just send those for no reason. What? Oh my God. <laughs> you got to go digging around in the bottom drawer. Well, not anymore. Sorry, James. <laughs> 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 that's all i asked for when she died the people looked at me like i was insane i was like where's your old victoria's secrets like, yeah. <laughs> maggie uh what was the magazine that your mom got that influenced you the most growing up <clears throat> uh well i have to say it was Oh shit! Oh. Uh, yeah, Ooh, chock full of intrigue. The cast, the cast, <laughs> personal story. Was totally, I thought she was hiding like a dirty mag in from two thousand three. <laughs> I think I took it with me from my parents' house, or like stuck it in a suitcase from my parents' house and forgot about it, and just Aww. have had it. And I ran across it and was just like, "Oh man, look at that!" Uh, also, Fritz, those jokes were pretty good if you were eight. <laughs> <laughs> read us one read us one. Old me love life in these united states and uh laughter is the best medicine <laughs> laughter is the best yes read us one from the magazine yeah oh yeah okay yeah yeah oh yes the laughter is the best medicine ones are better i feel because the this other is... ones are just america's funniest home videos but right. in writing <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what i was thinking of like in this, written form this is oh three one twenty. <clears throat> this this, is, this suspense is killing me. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's gonna be a bomb. Uh, when Diane found out she was pregnant, she lit up the phone lines telling everyone the good news. One day, she took her four-year-old son, Sam, out shopping. A woman asked the boy if he was excited about the baby. Yes, Sam said. And I know what we're going to name it, too. If it's a girl, we're calling it her Molly. And if it's another boy, we're going to call it quits. <laughs> <laughs> is that like a, is this a subtle abortion joke? I think I'm too stupid joke. for Reader's <laughs> Digest jokes. <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, the subtle sexism of either they're going to have the son which they all the only thing mm. they need to care about and then they'll be done trying <laughs> or if they are stuck with another uh, female do uh, child then they'll they'll try again for mm. a boy yeah, i thought it, i thought it was the other way around if they had a girl then it would be fine then they could have a girl and a boy and you know then they could have another baby and it's no big deal but if they have another boy they're going to call it quits well, all we do know is like, these they got are another Sam running around. They're going to be like, fuck all of yeah, this. Yeah, that is also true. No more Two Sam. Sons. Let's, write, <laughs> let's write to Reader's Digest now about yeah, this joke let's... from 2003 and be like, can you, <laughs> yeah, can you clear up this yeah. joke for <laughs> us? What if... Let's start a Reddit thread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if Reader's Digest has even seen Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, is there a Reader's Digest Reddit? Look it up. I'm looking yeah, right I know. Now. Is there a Reddit wow. Digest? Uh, oh, yeah, yes, just... there is the Top 10 oh, Jokes no. of America, Reader's Digest Reddit, and then there's there's a whole Reader's Digest. Uh, Reddit is now source material for Reader's Digest page. Um, Fun. The Ooh, best yeah. Reddit Reader's... <laughs> the best Reddit. The best Reader's Digest jokes of all times, Reddit. Um, I mean, there's a lot on Reddit about Reddit. What if we find out somehow that Reddit is owned by Reader's Digest this whole time? 
It's, <laughs> would that be a term oh or God. what? Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, it's like when it's like it went on Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> their 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 favorite diner, the Peach Pit, opened up the nightclub out back. Yeah, the Peach Pit After Dark, and Reddit is the Peach Pit After Dark of Reader's Digest. And Ed McMahon really? just keeps showing up like, subscribe to these Reddit threads for a chance to win a million dollars. It just kind of feels like, okay, dad, I put Reader's Digest on the computer like you asked. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's called Reddit because I've already read it. <laughs> Maggie breaking it down. Unpacking it. I know a disgruntled labor of love when I see one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nailed it. A lot of copy and pasting happened here. This is there's no passion. Very dispassionate behavior. Uh, Fielding, was there a magazine that your mom or or dad or whoever in your house subscribed to that, that really hit you as a kid? Um, well, I definitely don't have Greg's mother's aesthetic for samovars and caress. <laughs> but I will say, she, I think my mom fancied herself to sort of erudite literary Yiddish Joan Didion because she'd always have the New York magazine or the New Yorker or Vanity Fair I mean Vanity Fair whatever but like I don't think she read full articles like I think and then she and then my dad would just get so pissed because it was just stacks and stacks of the New York <laughs> Times and he's like you don't fucking read it Mary you're sitting here when are you gonna read it you're fucking sitting here and like nothing got read and then um my dad would come in with a smooth landing with penthouse that was Ooh. hidden under his table. Nice. Penthouse, not Playboy. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Penthouse. That's hot. <laughs> Daddy's yeah, Penthouse? Ooh. Daddy's Penthouse? Just saying that, I'm I, I'm all kinds of things. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything after smooth landing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on that part um, of the sentence. I think I just went into a blackout. I don't know how smooth, what's how smooth landing? I just know that now that you're bringing me back, then there was also like the joy of sex, like oh, in wow. or like how to make love to a man. I'm making it sound like I was raised in some hippie wow. sex yeah. community. They were the most <laughs> uptight Jewish New Yorkers, but like had some <laughs> people loan like, those to them, like so people would read them. Like, <laughs> who's been who's been mess, who's been fiddling with Daddy's penthouse? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but oh, yeah. before the internet, you had to find that you had to get this information from somewhere. You know that you're out there. Uh, uh, an idiot. You don't know how to have sex because no one knows what they're doing. So you yeah. had to uh, do some research. I I appreciate that. Yeah, we didn't even know sex was even for women until like 1986. <laughs> right, right. It wasn't. My dad's only magazines were Bass Masters. Not. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of dirty, but it's about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> How you can fill 12 months about new fishing information is insane. Well, I mean, a lot of it 12 months of boobs in there, they could put 12 months of fish. <laughs> when a third of the pages like are, are filled with, with beefy, beautiful guys in camouflage bibs, you know what they're really selling. That's a well, different type of magazine altogether. Mm, it's a lifestyle man. magazine. Yeah, you, mm. you at home mm. must become the bass master of your own family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my arms look good in that bib. You know, they, this is the way that men are. That bib. Dysmorphia as well. <laughs> Where's my bib? Where's my damn bib? How my leg? How my legs gonna look in them waders? Yeah. <laughs> Where's that bib? Make my arms look good. <laughs> Honey, bring the bib that makes my arms looks good. The boys are gonna be there. You know. Well, no, the, the green camo bib. No, <laughs> you know, the, the, Sunday, the Sunday bib. The Sunday bib. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you go to a big, a big outdoor space like Cabela's that sells these things outside of the mm. changing room, it's just like a David's bridal. There's the That's podium so with the race thing and the mirrors all around. And they're getting a good look at the merchandise before they walk out with it. They want to look very nice, very tasty. Mm. Honey, get the good ghillie suit. We got a baptism to go to. <laughs> <laughs> no, give me the black one. It's awake. It's awake. It's we awake. Love it. 
but that don't mean we can't get some fishing in. <laughs> <clears throat> True. <clears throat> it's what they would have wanted. Uh, after this podcast is over, I'm just going to stay in this chair and just keep yelling off to the side. Hey, give me that bib. <laughs> give me that hologram bib, Darla. <laughs> no, the one with the Velcro back. I don't want to tie nothing. Give me that hyper color bib, the one where you touch it and it changes the color. <laughs> give me the bib with the pocket on the front. <laughs> Give me that bib I saw on TikTok. Make your booty look good. Give me that booty bib. Yeah. That booty lift booty bib. bib. Oh, booty man. Honestly, if you put a booty lift bib on there, it would explode. It would booty so bibs is something. Popular. That's the thing. We can make women-centered bibs that really just hug and lift the ass. And they're called booty bibs. And instead of, like, camo on them, they have all the emojis. They have... Oh, like, women don't like to be camouflaged. They... Really? I mean, aren't they camouflaged by society enough, James? Wow. Mm. Not when they're geese hunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Uh, yeah. That's a keeper. Booty bib with maybe a flap that goes up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a I just pictured it blowing in the wind a little bit. Yes. Yeah, the women's flap opens the other way. Okay. I <laughs> Just full on a flapping. crotch crotch removal booty bibs. The the crotch snap right off. The crotch snap right off. <laughs> I remember when they when they came up with the the snap off uh, track pants, and that really, I mean, that's the whole athleisure phenomenon that stemmed from rip, ripping off those pants. The Have late you 90s. Ever, has anyone here ever been, had the opportunity to to do a a track pant rip off move? <laughs> I have not. I've seen it pulled off a couple of times, really very funny and well. And I've thought to myself, one day. Have you, Risinger, have you? I have, but I believe, and I could be wrong about some of the details, but one time I saw uh, in the Green Zoom's own Maggie May do a, was this not, was it not a track pant? ripoff move on stage for the cheerleader uh bit do you remember what i'm Actually, talking about yeah yeah because i was like that sounds like some shit i would do mm -hmm. i think i borrowed someone's track pants so i could yank them off yes. for that. <laughs> yeah yeah love it it was a very successful uh track pant ripoff move thank it, you the audience loved it I, mean, I remember it was at the dynasty my usual move is a trench coat or like a dress mm -hmm. that i pop out mm -hmm. of it and i'm wearing something else Mm. Yeah. Ooh. I got I like a few shows in Portland. There's always a that aspect to it. <laughs> I did a track pant ripoff. I was working for a minor league baseball team in Dayton, Ohio, the Dayton Dragons doing entertainment like throughout the game. And oh, we remember these stories. Yeah. And one time I was an umpire <laughs> uh who was going to uh throw out the mascot in between innings. Because I, I came out, I replaced the umpire on first baseline, and the uh, the the dragon mascot came up with a, like one of those big like water water or plant waters and had itching powder said itching powder on it. So he pours the itching powder down my pants, and then I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I start itching, and they're like, "Just don't scratch your balls when you're doing this." And I was like, "Okay." And uh, so then I start scooting on the ground like a dog, you know, like dogs do that. And then I'm just like scratching everywhere. And then there were track pants that I had to rip off and they were very colorful boxers underneath. So I got to do a track pant rip off in front of about, uh, I think it was about 7,500 people. Um, and then the, wow. they, they loved it. They loved it. And then I, I ran off. But that was I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get the the move. Um, sure but i pulled it off i pulled it off and mm. uh, you know literally I mean, janet yeah. jackson lost her entire career yeah. for a very similar halftime mm -hmm. display that's crazy yeah i guess that's i guess that's white privilege Ryan. you gotta you gotta take you gotta take it where it comes from maybe send janet a check yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. i should what, maybe i should what can you do to make i've got her address strangely enough i've got her address that is weird i think people don't realize just how demoralizing it is to not be able to execute a track pant rip off like if mm -hmm. you're out there and Ooh. you go because it's a confident move yeah and it's you it. snap half of it and your leg is still uh, in the other one because you didn't look 
You just look they, like a fool. I they snap that, on pretty tight, right? They snap on. Oh tight. yeah. You know, you're moving. And I think that uh it's just <laughs> desserts. It's just desserts for that jerk jock out there who's like doing it literally. And he's what about do to do it. He's pulling it off. And maybe he he it gets stuck and his whole left leg doesn't come out and he just flips himself right over. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and let's be honest. People don't just sit around doing track pant ripoff moves at home. You don't. You know, this isn't something you're practicing. Hi, Chris. So, Hi. I was going to say, Chris. Chris Fairbanks just joined Hi, us, and I've got a feeling Chris may have actually practiced ripping track pants off. Uh, tearaway pants, as we call them, uh, <laughs> in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've torn off. Uh, I'm trying to think of why, but uh, I'm gonna take these off. I was waiting uh, not to change the subject. Permission <laughs> to change? Or are we talking? Think, we're we're non sequiturs. I hear I, that. I think we've ex- all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think we've explored it. <laughs> I'm just saying it's easier. <laughs> I've I've a, more than once turned a pair of pants into tearaway pants, where you of course rip out the inseam and replace it with Velcro. Um, for <laughs> theatrical reasons or you know costume reasons, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you're looking at Adidas snap pants, and those just don't release very well. You can rip them, even if they're meant to pull away if you do it and you're dealing with snaps you're gonna rip the fabric it's just you gotta get in there and have a seamstress i was waiting for this to start at uh nine i'm i'm in montana so i thought you guys started at eight i don't know where i got the (laughs) i saw eight to nine i know in the past we did this at seven but i got bad information because i read it and Mm. i said that's different that's an hour later than normal (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and myself hi fielder <laughs> it's good to see you again. hi chris it's great to see you Are I, you in in Missoula? Missoula? I, I feel like something was happening the, the email says seven i'm back home in winter haven florida i'll Ryan, forward you, you the thing that said eight <laughs> James. <laughs> oh, I believe you. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the email. Yeah, it was maybe it was out. a dream you had. Um, I'll find it. I'm gonna find the whatever said eight and send it. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. It, the timing was impeccable, though. That he comes that in. That was again. impeccable. It, it's almost like we brought in like the tearaway pant expert to wrap up the segment. <laughs> How he's made his own tearaway pants? Are you serious? That's amazing. Good blame, kind of good disappearance, fucking mic drop, whatever just happened. <laughs> I'm, he's going to come back, and we're going to be still talking about tearaway pants because that brings <laughs> us to our next subject of the evening. What's the next type of clothing they should turn into tearaway? Um, uh, I'm going to go first, just because, just for fun, because I brought it up. I'd love to see a tearaway beanie um because it would serve no purpose at all but i feel like it would be very dramatic to rip off a beanie just so uh well Chris, welcome back hey, sorry my computer died and now i'm on my uh, device i'm gonna turn it to hamburger style here Burgers, there, uh, we, there uh, we go we thought, were, we thought you did that on purpose because the way you went out was perfect timing <laughs> it was a great out. of mid-sentence i it yeah. is a good way to get out of i've gotten out of some zoom shows that way <laughs> I've gotten some. All right. Gotten Here's my out. first joke, everybody. Hey. And then just hold up a black, <laughs> hold up a black piece of construction paper, and I go. I got out of a ten-year marriage that way. <laughs> Fielding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what? No, Ted. Let me just talk to my assistant right here. <laughs> talk to your oh. attorney. That's my other bit of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Larry will get his lawyer from a bench, but I already know who I would. Go. <laughs> I have my attorney. I I literally take cards from DJs, being like, for my next wedding, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> use you for my next wedding. They're like, okay, weirdo. <laughs> I'm so broke. I take cards from DJs and say, for my next attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, you know, that actually takes us to our real. 
tackle the next subject. And what is, uh, which is, what is the worst slash job for your attorney to have? Um, James, you started off with DJ. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. I don't think I don't think we can do much better, but by God, we're going to try. It. Ryan, what's the worst side gig for your attorney to be to have? And you know, I don't want I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but um, I would not want my attorney to be a a a, a kid's birthday party clown. Um, I, I, I just, I don't want any, I don't want the wrong briefcase showing up in the courtroom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him cross-examining. Uh, I don't know who would be cross-examining in this. I don't know. I would be taking him to court and then like, you know, accidentally he squirts them with water from a flower in his, in his coat pocket. Uh, that's like not, my, that's not cross-examination. Uh, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say birthday party, kids, birthday party clown. Yeah, that would be terrible. You don't want to be at a birthday party telling your friend that you've got a really good divorce lawyer. And then you start looking at that clown, that voice is just sounding so familiar. That That's just, the, that's a nightmare scenario. Um, Fielding, what do you think would be the worst side gig for your attorney to have? What's the non-starter? I'm going to say that by the worst side gig would if he was the person in the plastic surgeon's office who took picture before and after pictures of women before their breast lift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that would be the worst. <laughs> I'm not saying I know this from personal experience. I'm just saying that's a terrible, 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 terrible job. For uh, everybody involved. Terrible. For everybody involved. <laughs> For everybody. Because. He's very interesting art in here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris Fairbanks, what do you think would be, is the worst job to find out that your lawyer is doing on the site? I can only think of good. Well, that the accidentes, accidentes <laughs> lawyer. He's on the back of, of all all the buses in all of Los Angeles. And it'd be interesting to find out that he had a vinyl rap company or something like he was, he owned the company that actually put vinyl signs on buses. Yeah. It would just seem like a misuse. It's actually a smart business move. <laughs> and it would have been with an actual ambulance chaser. Like he, he was a lawyer separate from this, but he was into some sport where he literally chased ambulances people would take that the wrong way. He's like, no, that's not the kind of lawyer I am. I just competitively like, chases chase ambulances. Cars. It's a new competition I'm into and people <laughs> keep getting the wrong impression that I'm an ambulance chaser. I just, <laughs> or the answer is I don't know. And I've tried twice to. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, my grandma was the first person that shared the phrase ambulance chaser with me and I was like it's it sounded like the an elite squad of lawyers that were really out there running down <laughs> these ambulances. They really care. Yeah. yeah. I was like that's 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 showing some fucking initiative right there. Mm -hmm. Uh Greg Barris, what's the worst job for your DJ to be or for your uh, attorney to be moonlighting on? Worst DJ. job for an attorney. I got 12. Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> um, meter maid. That's a bad one. Your attorney's also a meter maid. What's that about? Did you say meter maid? You, you, you said, you just said it. I said it. <laughs> I fully agree. <laughs> meter maid. Um, just a lifeguard at Laguna Beach. A Laguna Beach lifeguard. And a lawyer? That's hello. <laughs> you're a fake person. Yeah, you're not real. Okay. A, um, I said meter maid. I said there were twelve. I lied. Ten more. I lied. Nope. Ten. Do it. <laughs> a, yeah, okay. you're a uh, a falafel cart uh, street cart falafel guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> a uh, 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 Mossad assassin. <laughs> or 
And that's wow. a good, that's okay. a cool one. Actually. Yeah, how yeah. do you find that out? That's I wonder. Awesome. Well, you don't want that to be your lawyer. Yes, I do. He's not uh, focused. Yes, I do. Divorce. I do. <laughs> not firing her. You know, probably you thank you. To get to something. All right, you're just on four. I wouldn't filibuster okay, this yeah, much. Okay, yeah. Um. Oh. Oh. A guy who owns a lot of Vietnamese shrimping boats. Very okay. problematic business. <laughs> so specific. Yes. That is a, the specificity wow. is... No, I don't think so. Um, if my lawyer's other profession was being Mark Zuckerberg, I wouldn't like it because he's also problematic. Halfway home. <laughs> We're halfway home. A person who does full-on perfect Mark Zuckerberg appearances acting as Mark Zuckerberg for corporate mm. events. Mm. Okay. Oh, mm. yikes. Mm. Well, this is a new height of truth. Right guy here. who has a small uh, strip mall, his own branded cell phone store. No. Okay. <laughs> like Tony's mobile? Yeah, Tony's phone. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's oh, hey. <laughs> How many do you want? Just tell me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got a tower on my mom's roof. Whew. Four Whew. more. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, hey, the district said attorney of Boston. Uh, actually, uh, I probably well, would. No, we'll count. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Relates as a different attorney. Uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, 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 oh, uh, this is how we break them from grade, saying that many guesses. Fifth least. grade PE coach. Okay. Fifth grade, oh, PE coach. Okay. fifth grade again. Very specific. That's ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the guy you had. You're at the beach, and then you get onto a boat, and you like get a harness on, then you go up in the boat in a parasail. Then you come back okay. down. The guy who runs that whole business. Greg just doesn't think lawyers should get to enjoy the beach. We're learning that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a lawyer. Get off my beach. Get the fuck off. Greg's gone to Florida. And all of his all of his suggestions are beach. <laughs> He's got Jimmy uh, Buffett brain. Yeah. Anyone playing? Anyone playing hockey for the Tampa Bay Lightning? All right. That's twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, that was amazing. Thank you. Uh, you used up almost all of the good occupations that um, our lawyers could be moonlighting as. Unfortunately, uh, Maggie has one even worse. Maggie, what's what's the worst job you find out your lawyers moonlighting as? Uh, a desperate Mary oh. Kay salesperson. Oh. No, Ugh. desperate Avon. Mm. Just someone Avon? who can't turn it off. Someone who is going to be like, oh, these 12 jurors are 12 potential people to become part of my Diamondback. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> and like, they don't even really care if they win the case so yeah. long as other people want to go sell their essential oils as well or whatever they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just working the jurors. That's so funny. Does anyone here sell for Cutco? All right, we'd like to dismiss jurors uh, 13 and 6. <laughs> Juror number 7, Nancy, I love Speaking your Speaking of, who gets guy. headaches? I've got some colloidal silver. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about colloidal silver. That was a thing for a while. It's still a thing. Still Is that what made that guy turn blue? I think yeah. if you had like a ton of it, you get a little blue. Yeah, that blue dude. What's it do again? It's an antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial. You know, you get a little bit in there. It's good for you. Uh, too much. We, it you cures it? every disease. And somehow the only person who was able to figure this out was like Pat Buchanan. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius. He's a genius. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but it cures everything from what I hear. Hmm. Uh, um, Fielding, I wanted to uh, encourage everyone to check out. You have a stand up comedy special out on uh, Comedy Dynamics, put it out, and it's on Amazon. Where else can you get They can get it everywhere, right? Where yeah. can you download yeah, it? Yeah, you could go to uh, the, all the platforms are on my website, but Amazon. I feel like there's a lot of ones like Xbox or Google Play or like <laughs> things that like I've never. <laughs> to me. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. 
The Amazon, the, go to my website. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. Oh, yeah, and I get absolutely. it on Voodoo? What if I just yes. keep asking? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a it's Voodoo good. guy. I'm one of the only, uh, it's all I watch is Voodoo. Get it on Crackle. Fire on Voodoo, weirdly. Yeah, on nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. And Bitter I, Homes for and one, I'm going to watch it. I've never seen it. <laughs> where, did, where did you where did you record it where did you shoot it i recorded at the lyric hyperion on um, oh cool you know, awesome. i like, can't is that crazy i can't remember the fuck on hyperion yeah on hyperion. there you go <laughs> that, yeah i had a like an emotional shootout yeah it was a fun night what this kind of, of cameras things. did you use? Okay. <laughs> if you want, I can answer to have a private Q&A after for technical stuff. I would like yeah. that. Oh, uh, Greg just reminded me, the worst side job your lawyer could have is asking questions in the audience at a film festival. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> did you shoot this in frame mode? <laughs> Was it in burst? Did you do your whole thing in burst? <laughs> <laughs> so where do you get your ideas from? Right. <laughs> How do you define love? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your mom's jugs. <laughs> yeah, that, guy, get, that guy's at South by Southwest All every right. year. Get him out of here. <laughs> the jugs guy is here. <laughs> Best lawyer in town, but this is yeah, ridiculous. Right I'm not saying it's uh, very inappropriate. <laughs> Very, he's always ruining like tell your ride. Get him the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Get him in a courtroom where he belongs and where he's talented. He really shines in a courtroom, but God, I God, he's a good lawyer, but God damn it, he's ruining my festival. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, practice so. law, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's very it's out of you. order. That's the problem. Uh, we we've set up a culture where everyone chases their dreams, and you can't talk people out of it. It's like, sir, you're you're just a lawyer. You don't have any of you don't have it. How do you tell someone that? Just a lawyer. Well, you mean like what all of our parents wanted us to be? Yeah. <laughs> I was actively discouraged from pursuing uh, any work in the law. Um, everyone knows I'm not a great reader, and no one mm, should be forced yeah. to have a lawyer. To well, be I think we've all. Reading. We all had the lawyer family of outlaws, like uh, running on empty. That was based on your family, right? True, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we all have the lawyer uh, getting into stand up at our like our open mic starting out? Everybody, I think every scene had. The oh lawyer, yeah. Right? Mm. Um, I, I just always wonder too. I mean, that might be the worst profession too. Like, you know, your lawyer trying to sneak in a tight like two minutes <laughs> during his opening. Yeah. Yeah, closing that, statements. That should have been all of our first oh. answer, because that is the word. Yeah, that would just be. You know, Go we're gonna get to the case real quick, but have you ever noticed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's a lawyer who is a YouTube star who is trying to transition to stand up, and this is his first show. Oh my god! His first show is your trial. Oh, that's a pitch, Maggie. That's oh. a pitch. I feel like, is this a Hulu pitch going on? Yeah. I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. No, there's a, no, there's a comedian who, who was a lawyer. I mean, I'm friendly with him. Do you, I mean, you guys know Matt Ritter? No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, and he dresses up. Like, I, I see him and he's like in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> Still, yeah. Yes, or oh, the TMZ guy. Well, and Greg Giraldo famously was a lawyer and then... Mm -hmm. He quit. Yeah, and then he got sick tats. Um, yeah, that's another yeah, big man. red flag, I guess. Back then, you couldn't be a Drew lawyer. Drew Morgan was a lawyer, tats. too. Who that? Who? Drew Morgan. Mm, interesting. Mm. Drew. Um, Drew and then Robert Jenkins. Then Guy Branham. <laughs> Is Eddie Guy Branham a lawyer? I think Brian or he, was was he graduated school. law school yeah. or something. Oh my God! I'd love to have somebody who like just lawyer. went through law school and graduated. And <laughs> what about no, Maggie? Yeah. Wasn't there an Austin comic that was a lawyer that was? Uh, maybe maybe he was done by the time you were there. I um, can't remember his name. I think there was he, one. I'm blanking. He had lawyer jokes. 
I think he was religious there? too. Oh well, if I remember this. John Ramsey. Name. Yep. That's right. <laughs> oh, That's right. That. He was a good comic too. Yeah. Terrible. That's lawyer. Weird. Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. Can't do both. Like no, he spent a can't. year in like Kenya working on human rights violations. Wow. Against, against he them, did right? town in one year and then the next year just went and volunteered that's, in Kenya or something. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, he adopted like a couple kids from over there. Well, that's that's John. like that 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 judge that was also a magician on Night Court. Oh, oh, Harry? Harry yeah. You mean Dan Fielding? Dan uh, Fielding. <laughs> no, the... Which Evan's like, were you named after Dan Fielding? I'm like, yeah, I was named after a Harry <laughs> 70s procedural show. You, you, you caught me. Oh, I love Dan the idea Fielding. People think that your parents will watch that show and be like, you know what? Let's <laughs> name someone after this show, first of all. That's on amazing. the Martin Post. Let's, Let's name them after the horn dog. Yeah. That we hope our daughter comes around yeah. our time. <laughs> Right. Your name was like, almost oh, sorry, Martin Mole. Mellish from Bananas. <laughs> right. That's, yeah, no. that's what I think first. Every time. You do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, Fielding comes from Feldman. I could not be, it could, if like, if I didn't come from a host of anti, like, self hating Jews, it, I would be like Feldman Edlowitz. Like, everything's just a change. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which sounds like, you know, they're like picking an ankle scab in an Orthodox camera shop. Like, <laughs> 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 hey, Oh, God. Uh, that was very graphic. It just hit me very graphically. It's very detailed. It's very vivid. Yeah. That's, that's definitely something that's something that I low-key really miss from stand-up comedy is hearing people describe things all night long just like yeah take me there take me on a journey where were we <laughs> what was happening I miss it <laughs> I, I do I miss the setups what can I say the punchlines who needs them but yeah. set me up baby <laughs> <laughs> I miss the pauses yeah I miss the person who would like pace back and forth and be like what else what yeah. else? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like, what else? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what else? <laughs> oh, whoa, yeah. Uh, laundry's crazy. <laughs> I miss lying to people and telling them they're a good crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I miss all my really good crowds. <laughs> they're lying to you. Um, <laughs> I did recently hey, find a drink ticket in a jacket and it made me sad for a drink I'm never going to have. Oh, I would just collapse on the floor if I saw one right now. You poor little thing. You never even got to fly. Your dreams never even got to. You could have been a. You could have been a, a vodka soda or anything media. you wanted, as long as it was well. As long as it was not top shelf. <laughs> but our but our but our well here is very good. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. yeah. But, our, but our well here is very good. <laughs> Uh, Fielding, thanks for joining us uh, in the Green Zoom this week. It's been really great having so you. Fun. Thank you so uh, much. This was a blast. Didn't want to, um, I told my family it just went all night just to like, <laughs> let them know. I'm not, I'm not coming just back. Get out of this. It's interminable. It's just like ongoing. I told We're going to need you to do like some homework in front of the television yeah. for this. <laughs> it's a telethon for sick kids. I got to be on all night. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> exactly. A turn an attorney who doubles as a Vietnamese truck cart or whatever. Shrimp boat, what was, was it? one of my favorites. Shrimp boat life coach. <laughs> shrimp boat clown. <laughs> yeah. I like shrimp boat life coach. Shrimp boat life coach. Yeah. 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 Well that, yeah. well yeah, that's like the part of the whole premise of Forrest Gump is kind of that. So I feel like oh, yeah. God, right. <laughs> stealing a premise from a very popular film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's all, oh. we're all hyphens. Shots My fired. Is voiceover, so it's all hyphens. <laughs> so I want everyone to check out Fielding on uh, on social media and find out all, all the stuff she's got coming up. Fielding, what's the best way for people to, to follow you and see what you got going on? Um, I would say uh, at Fielding Edlow, Instagram or FieldingEdlow.com. And bitter, bitterhomesandgardens.com and Chris Fairbanks is a special oh. VIP guest star in season Ooh. two. 
and um, kind of steals the show and kind of put my oh. husband in his place. Oh. And was like, that guy's a really fucking good actor. And he kept bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I made it to his one man show. I'm glad I was in the audience. Very important. Very Singer. important character development. Ryan Singer was also a part of Bitter Homes and Garden season two. But yeah, I was, um, we had incredible incredible people like so it wasn't a self-indulgent masturbatory circle jerk of a but stay tuned for season three and that is not the summary uh you'll find on the internet <laughs> that's a reader, that's a reader's <laughs> digest summary <laughs> it's quite succinct <laughs> uh well check out the show check out season one it's on it's up on youtube correct feeling Yep, it's on YouTube, or I think best bet is bitterhomesandgardens.com. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Check cool. it out. And uh, Thank thanks for coming and enjoying the show, and thanks for coming fielding. We'll uh, see you all next week. This see has been you fun. All. Sorry I was Yeah, thanks late. for joining us. Sorry <laughs> Thank I you. was late. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you, Chad. Talk <laughs> soon, guys. Love you. That was so fun. I gotta, unfortunately, I got to run. I got an 815 thing I'm doing. But oh. Oh.